What's up everybody? It's that time again. I've got a nice big red and white box from Scale Trains and this one is a neat little model. So as you can see on the box, it's labeled an AC 4400CW, but which railroad? Well, the title already kind of gives it away, but today I finally received CSX Engine 391, the Spirit of Dant. Dant, as the folks of small town Dant, Virginia would like for it to be called. It is a railroad town located on the Clinchfield Railroad, very historically significant, especially in the development and in the history of this operation and in this part of CSX's heritage legacy. Now I have seen the 391, it has gone around the system and I got to see it on a rock train, albeit trailing. I have a photo of it here from 2016 at Griffin Road in Dania and Behind the 8595, there is a 391, Spirit of Dent. And of course, having that model what you see vibe, I just had to get this model when it was announced. There are a few things that are unique to this run of the AC44 that we'll talk about. Well, not horribly unique, but definitely unique to this particular run. And I will go over the various details, features, and perhaps show some test running at the very end. So sit back and enjoy. So as I record this, this is my absolute first time unboxing this locomotive. Here's the AC4400 product manual and here is the 391 looking very nice in its YN2. The engine appears to be shown as delivered. The wheels on the trucks are painted brown. And from what I see here, it's a fairly gorgeous model. You go through the protective foam and I will just gently uncage this locomotive. The packaging is very standard for a high quality rivet counter level locomotive and as usual scale trains includes a couple of spare rotating bearing caps in case any of these fall off the engine thankfully I've not really had this issue yet in the nearly seven years I've owned scale trains locomotives the engine sits on two little mounts for the trucks and gently remove those and you reveal the locomotive. Four pieces of plastic protect the long hood and the handrails. We'll get these out to show the model in its beauty. And wow. And just like that, we reveal CSX AC 4400 number 391, the Spirit of Dant. So the 391 is my second Spirit locomotive in my possession, as I also have the 4685 Spirit of Mulberry awaiting a DCC installation. But this one definitely be a very meaningful one. I can already picture the trains I will be putting this unit on, and that includes, of course, a CSX coal train, as these AC 4400s are very dedicated coal pullers. Their most frequent presence in Florida alone was pulling these long 100 car plus unit coal trains. Similar tonnage wise, I catch it on a rock train, so these things are heavy haulers. 4400 horsepower to the prototype, fairly good pulling power to the scale trains model. And I expect this will deliver the same consistent pulling power as with past major six axle locomotives that they've done. So we'll now focus specifically on the scale trains model and how it captures that rivet counter level detail and go over each individual component. So up front, starting with the front, you have the ditch lights, the gray ditch lights, they will be LEDs. I still have not tested this yet, so we will see what happens live on the camera. Uh, cut levers, MU hoses, MU cable, couplers, the scale trains brown coupler, believe it is metal if not plastic prototypical separately applied looks like steps and I anticipate that there will probably be a ground light here number boards should also be lit with an LED per number board and we have the necessary grab irons sanding lines etc not sure if these are for sand but I know in the back definitely get sand uh, the top looks like it doesn't have much in the way of communications equipment, so no PTC, definitely no PTC, as this is the as-delivered model. But I believe this is an antenna of some kind, and possibly this as well. Sunshades separately applied, probably brass. 
and you can see that the mirrors are also included and they are separately applied parts. Uh, fireman side, similar look, different features based on the actual locomotive. So you see like the extra raised walkway here, which is normal for a GE of this type. Um, several grills, dynamics, etc. Loving the detail. K5LA and the exhaust stack. And we go to the back of the unit where we have the radiators, which just like in the prototype, do not have the cooling, the extra cooling unit. So, and on the back, we have the headlight here. No ditch lights as in the prototype. Looks like knuckle mounts, MU hoses, cable, and the appropriate handrails and handbrake over here. Very beautiful model. I always love this YN2 scheme, especially on the AC44s. It wears it just naturally. Leave the bell. Yeah, the bell's here. Fuel tank and the trucks. So this is where I get into the trucks. Uh, so this is the first run of the AC4400s, to my knowledge, that has the radial trucks, which is prototypical for CSX units, at least numbered from 200 all the way up and every single GE that they have ordered from AC4400 number 200, 201, whatever that first number in that sequence was, had radial trucks up until they ordered tier four credit units, which started the trend of putting back the high ad trucks, high adhesion. So radial trucks are supposed to make these things appear to be more steerable. And now in an HO model, I don't think you will notice that benefit or that perk. But it's really cool to have a model that has these trucks. And no doubt, since I have an ES44AH from Scale Trains, uh, this is not the first time that they produce these trucks, but definitely the first time that an AC4400 receives them. Other than that, I mean, the bar is already really high. You get, you get what you expect. This thing did set us back about... $305, a small little increase from previous run where it was 300 even. Owe it to logistics becoming more challenging in the mid 2020s and whatnot. Maybe inflation, who knows? But despite the slightly hefty price tag, the engine does not disappoint. Looks absolutely gorgeous, almost completely flawless. I don't see any flaws, the grab irons, everything just looks so nicely applied and we'll see. We'll, we'll put this on the test track and come back shortly. And to top it off, I do have another AC4400 that I can pair this up with, this time with the high adhesion trucks. So we'll have a nice little showdown there. All right, so now we have the 391 on the layout, address defaulted to three. There's your K5LA. There's your bell. And as you can see, the engine is now powered up with the ground and walkway lights. And this might help offer a slightly better view. Those lights were on based on the remote. Note that this has a Loke Sound 5 decoder. And we'll do a couple programming changes to make this a little more up to speed with my other units. So for instance, I will program the address to 391 using my NCE remote. And I will program the flash rate of the dish lights to match the prototype. The CV of 112 goes to 22. CV 132, 255. So now it flashes like a grade crossing sequence. It'll take about 16 seconds for the flash to stop. And I'll make the sound maxed out as well. So that's the CV of 63, goes to 192. So she's a little louder.
F5 gives you the DPU light, which I just had on there like when you're switching and you see that the light's reversed. And what makes this rivet kind of locomotive definitely worth the value is what happens when I lift the engine up or when it hits dirty track, which is probably what this layout actually has. It has an onboard ESU stay alive, which is a capacitor which allows the electricity to still flow to the engine's motors and keep it going for a few seconds. As you can see, it timed out after five or six seconds. So I'm gonna put my other unit, the 96, on. I actually have not programmed it to spec yet, and we're gonna run a little train. Now we're taking both the 391 and the 96 in all its glory. One thing I wanted to comment is that I'm very pleased that the LEDs are pretty immaculate. I know there's been times where the ditch lights have not been very bright. There's been probably cases where the headlight has not been the brightest, but from what I'm seeing, I and mean, this is very consistent, this is probably the level of brightness I would achieve if I were to do one of these in-house as with the case with the 7003, for example, which I have a video of that on this channel. So very well done. Glad Scale Trains has gotten it right yet again with the AC44. And you see 96 here, which is almost similar, except it has high adhesion trucks and it has a misplaced CSX logo, which I believe is a unit-specific detail. So I hope you have enjoyed this review and find it useful when considering your next Skill Trains AC44 purchase. And I am really excited and looking forward to sharing many more videos of these AC44s in action, pulling cold trains, manifest trains, intermodals, you name it. But as you know, if you want to see those videos, just make sure you're subscribed so you're the first to know when they go up. And while you're at it, feel free to leave a like and comment on this video sharing your thoughts of these skill trains AC44s. From HQ, where these AC44s be chugging along, this is TE, out.